Hello everybody, my name is Luke Mar and this is Hot Lamode. Mode and today on Hot Lamode, Mode we are coming to you with the May 2022 Fashion Roast and review. There's a lot to discuss, but before we actually get into it, let's just say if you are a channel member, check out the channel member version. And if you're not, you should become one because then you'll get to see the full 50 looks that we're gonna be discussing. But if you're not, there's still a grand amount of content, so don't worry. I also should say, listen, hit the subscribe button, like this video, share it with your friends. I don't know, follow on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, wherever, all them up. But without further ado, let's just get right into it. First up, we have Addison Rae and she is wearing Rick Owens. And listen, this is the thing I will say about Addison Rae. When she is bad, she is oh so bad. But when she is good, it's good. So she's doing a honestly pretty girl version of Rick Owens. It's a very sort of neoclassical draped, gathered, textured, asymmetrical sort of goddess dress and nice light sort of slate gray. Very Rick Owens minimal but at the same time texturized. Looks like it fits well and it also is very pretty. Very sleek, very elegant. The composition of the photograph is also like nice and it looks good. And then on top of it, I think the heels are like the best part. They're beautiful sort of sandals, but they're in that kiss boot sort of style. So they have the lucite heel and they have the big sort of platform, but you can obviously see through and like see foot. They have an open toe. So in my opinion, it's like taking the kiss boot and sort of making it again, very Greek goddess, neoclassical sort of vibe. It's very chic, it's very fun. I think it's very summery and festive, but at the same time, very refined, very Rick Owens, avant-garde, minimal, sort of, you know, fashion forward, but at the same time, like not too fashion forward for Addison Rae to handle. So I'm the first one to rip this woman up, no problem. But when it's good, I'll say it's good. And I think this is very good. I like this for Addison. Let's keep going. Next up, we have Alexa Demi, and she was at Balenciaga's Resort 2023 show. She is wearing a version of a look, I believe, from fall 2022, ready to wear. I couldn't find the runway version that was black. There might be one, but I found the blue version. Essentially, it's an asymmetrical pelvic area of a, of a jean. It exposes the shoulders, doesn't have sleeves, but at the same time, it has pockets. It looks like the top part of jeans and then we can see that it's tucked into a pair of big baggy jeans or maybe it has a big belt it's very demna georgian now the look in and of itself like do i think it's bad yeah I, there's this whole like trend of we're gonna turn jeans into anything bags and tops and more pants and skirts and dresses and coffin liners, but they will turn jeans into anything at this point. We have to stop the madness because it's not that chic. It's not that elegant. It's a little bit, dare I say, ugly. And listen, I'm not one to be like, this is ridiculous. Fashion is dead. Oh, this is too crazy. Like it, it's not too crazy. It just also is just not attractive. You know what I mean? Like I appreciate that we did something crazy and kooky and weird, but also at a certain point, it gets a bit too Floridian for me. Alexa Demi, I appreciate it. Thank you. Balenciaga, appreciate it. Thank you. Maybe let's move on to something a little bit different, please, because everybody else is doing it. Let's push it along. Next up, we have Ariana Grande. She is wearing custom Vera Wang. Now she wore this to her brother's wedding. It's very simple, but listen, it's a bra top with an intriguing cup because it looks like they're almost reaching around, but it has straps on it. So they're not actually like reaching around in that sort of way, but it's not like a bandeau where it connects all the way. And then it's pretty much just a high-waisted skirt with a little slit that has been gathered to a degree. Not really crazy, but also like she's going to a wedding. So I mean, are you trying to be like crazy? You're trying to like upstage Frankie Grande. I don't know if that's possible. I don't think it is, but like still I, I understand. So it's not one of the craziest Ariana Grande looks that I've ever seen. And I'm willing to like give her a little bit of a pass because of the context and also because she's been putting in work. I appreciate it. We've seen the fashion glow up. It's been glowing. So We'll let it rock. Next up, we have Bretman Rock. He is wearing Fendi as well. It's pretty much just a logo blazer. There is the Fendi logo choker and, and a bag. I presume that it's part of the Fendace collection, which is a Versace Fendi collection. I'm not sure though. It could be, it could not be. It's a little bit tame for Bretman. A little too tame for Bretman for me. I'm not saying that we can't have our moments, but I want like a little bit more exciting than Fendi logo, but I can't totally blame Bretman. The Fendace 
if that's what this is. Next up, we're gonna talk about Chloe Sevigny. There's a lot of Chloe Sevigny to discuss. She got married. So let's talk about the dress that she chose. And you know me, I'm very like pro everybody enjoying their wedding and like not to speak ill of anybody's wedding. Although when we get to the Kardashian section, all of those bets are off. But the great thing about Chloe Sevigny is like she has phenomenal taste in general. So she pulled out a Jean-Paul Gaultier haute couture look by Glenn Martins for his collection that he designed. It's a stunner. It's a gorgeous look. It's a white, beautiful chiffon dress that essentially creates bodice with like a, a chevron sort of style where we can see the white sort of chiffon like frothing out, but we can see the sheerness of the dress. We can see Chloe's skin underneath. There's a really, really beautiful job that sort of nips in the waist and then the skirt sort of falls out vertically with the same sort of like big I want to call them like tubes of chiffon that sort of fall down the front of the dress and there's a frothy little shoulder. It's really like, it's a beautiful dress. It's very cool. It's very unconventional. It's very Glenn Martin's does weddings for the old couture women. It's just a really intriguing, beautiful dress and I'm grateful to be able to see it. And it seems like there is some sort of lace that goes underneath, at least on the skirt. We can see there's some sort of little motif going on under there. I just am like in awe that... Chloe Sevigny has such fantastic taste at all times. You know what I mean? Like people talk about having taste and style and it's like natural and all. This is like one of the moments where it's like, yes, thank you. Appreciate, love to see it. Congrats to her and the husband, whatever his name is. Next up, we have Christine Chu from Bling Empire and she is wearing Balenciaga. She attended the Resort 2023 show as well. What she is wearing is a denim jacket that is worn off the shoulders. In my opinion, a stunning, gorgeous, iconic, wonderful reference to Demi's first Balenciaga women's wear show where those beautiful coats were off the shoulder. It was very Balenciaga-esque in terms of reference. It really, like, that's, Still, to me, like, such a standout collection that, like, will go down in history, in my opinion. So it's nice to see that, like, little reference here. It's not as, what I would say, altered as the original versions were, because I know the original versions sort of flare out at the bottom because there's a stitch in there that sort of makes them flare out. But this one is just, it's a nice, like, fun little reference, I think, to Demna's very, very, very first Balenciaga Women's Wear collection. Love to see it. And then we have this long floor length skirt in a what looks like a taffeta sort of silk. Very Balenciaga, I would say. Christine Chu, is a, she's an haute couture client. We'll react to that video if you guys want. And to me, it reads very Christine. It reads very Balenciaga, a la Demna. Do I like love them together? No, but do I think it makes sense for the context of Balenciaga? Like currently, yeah. Would I put it together? No. Do I understand it? Yeah. And that's half the battle nowadays, just understanding it. You know what I mean? Like if you understand it, that's great. You don't have to love it then. Next up we have Christine Quinn. She is wearing Balenciaga, a little gathered dress. It looks like a wrap dress. I'm thinking that it's actually a panel that flows over top and then it's a panta sort of shoe or it's some sort of jumpsuit because it's all black. We can see that there's most definitely like a panta shoe very Demna, Balenciaga, all throughout there. And then what we can see is the gathering in the front falls over. It feels almost like those shirts that Demna did, or maybe it was women's wear, where it was like the two shirts sewn on top of each other. So it has that kind of feeling to it to me. And then that bag, which I think obviously Balenciaga is like now pushing very hard. It's the new sort of bag of the year. I don't hate it. I wish Christine was a little bit smarter about what she wears. I know everybody's like, Christine, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yeah, yeah, great TV, blah, blah, blah. That's not what we're here to talk about though. I don't think Christine has taste to back up everything else. And I say that because it's just always like a Bauman 1980s, like sharp shoulder blazer and a skinny pant or like a dress that's fitted. And that's my issue with Christine. So like this to me, I feel like we should have pushed her something a little bit more fashion forward. So if she's becoming a Balenciaga woman, fine, but push outside of your usual shtick of, is it fashion or are you just skinny? Next up we have Doja Cat, she is wearing Valentino on the cover of Elle magazine. Now it's a pink dress in that Pier Paolo PP pink and it is a cutout style that sort of showcases breast and the boob and the hip and the side. Now it's also been paired with tights that are bright pink and sort of come up to the hip 
area and I presume matching shoes. Covering up, which I understand, obviously like we don't want to be showing everything on the cover maybe for I don't know, whatever reason. It's not a bad, it's not, it's really not a bad look for Valentino at all. Like I think it's one of the intriguing looks of that collection. And it was one that like set itself apart most definitely from a lot of the other versions of this pink dress style compared to however many looks there were. But it's just not the best way to showcase this dress if we're covering up all of the cutout. And I don't blame Doja for that. I feel like it's more of an L editorial decision why we did that. I just wish that we hadn't done that. Not because I'm like, oh my God, Doja Cat, like show off your whole body. But more so because like, why did we pull a cutout dress if we're gonna make her cover herself? Somebody explain, I am confused. It's a great dress. I love the bows on the side. I think it's really fun. I just don't know why we made her cover up the cutout dress. You know what I mean? It's ironic nonsensical some may have said. Next up we have Dove Cameron and she is wearing Valentino. Now this is a look from the fall 2022 collection. It's also one of the looks that is part of that PP pink collection but it's in black because there was a little black section in it. I love this neckline. I think it's a really really gorgeous neckline. I love the fit of this dress. I think it fits better here on Dove than it does on the runway or at least via the photos it does. The little bows on the side are really really lovely. I think it's very nice little Valentino sort of tie in historically. It's a house code. I just think it fits her phenomenally and whoever her stylist is is doing a really really good job. Never did I ever think I would think about Deb Cameron outside of the context of the descendants and like here we are. It's just it's a little fashion moment and I'm really I'm proud and I'm happy and she is doing the Zendaya transition from Disney girl to fashion girl. Very happy to see it. Next up we have Dua Lipa. She's on the cover of Vogue. Listen, people are gonna like say, Lou, talk about the cover. I'm not a photographer. Like my composition skills are like not fantastic. Look at this background. So I don't really have anything to say about like the photographs, but also it's like American Vogue. If you were expecting something exciting, that's a you problem. No offense. It's just not gonna be major and or memorable. No offense, Avedon is dead. I don't know who like needs to tell everybody that, but like he's he's dead. Cecil Beaton's gone. Helmut Newton also gone. They're all gone. And Vogue is not hiring like the girls that shoot well. So I don't know what we're expecting. So anyway, let's talk about the look. It's essentially a white rib knit tank top, very Ralph Simmons, Tom of Finland, homosexual. And then it's a light gray rib knit dress that is merged. I don't know how it's come together. Maybe it's just layered with a fishnet dress with little embroideries of florals sort of stem out of it. And then it has the Prada triangle logo, which has become very, 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 very Prada-esque since Raph Simmons has come in. So honestly, I think the look in and of itself is Prada's it's strange, it's weird, it's layered, it's nuanced. I love the gray rib top, and then I love the fact that we have this beautiful little light fishnet skirt, but it's done with this little dainty embroidery in yellow. It's really lovely. I think it's very much so a Mutra Prada-ism of trying to modernize embroidery and doing embroidery on a fishnet skirt in a way that like nobody actually is realistically gonna wear is amazing. It's super funny, I think it's great. And then a little sort of black underwear underneath. Overall, listen, I think it's hilarious. I think it's a good look. I think it's very much so fashion in the sense of like, it's not something you're gonna see walking down the street. Although if it did, I wouldn't be complaining. I think it's intriguing. I think it's very dooly, but I think it's very sort of what she does, which is body showcasing movement. I'm not opposed to this. I think it's a nice look on her. The way that it's shot, different conversation. Next up we have Elle Fanning and she's wearing Gucci. She was at the Resort 2023 show. There is a crispy metallic pink pant, which honestly love. Very chic, very elegant, very cute. A little black blazer, a white button down shirt, a patinaed leather tie, which I see you Elle. I see you. Fashion girl. I know. A little studded bag and a very metallic -y sort of shoe situation. Honestly, like, I like this. I don't I don't hate it. I like when Elle does, like, the tailored sort of Gucci vibe. I feel like we've seen that from her. And I think this is, like, a fun way of doing it. It's still, like, pretty in pink, but it's a little bit harder in that metallic. Weirdly enough, I think the utilization of black and white in more of, like, a tailoring sort of scheme for everything else is, like, pretty decent. It doesn't hurt the look. I think it works. I'm shocked, but I kind of love it this. I don't know how, I don't know why, but I do. Next up we have Emma Stone. She's wearing Louis Vuitton. This is from the fall 2022 collection. It is an off the shoulder gown with a panel of pleated chiffon that sort of runs down the front and has two little loops 
in the front is very Nicholas Jaskier, weird, wacky deconstruction, reconstruction. I don't know what's happening. Although on the runway, there was like a big sweater tied over it. So like maybe that's why they tied the sweater over it. I don't know. And then there's a little red belt, which I feel like doesn't make any sense in the context of like a pleated Grecian neoclassical sort of gown style. Whatever the embroidery is, it's very intriguing. Overall, like it's, it's not attractive, I would say, but it is intriguing. And I, I appreciate that from Louis Vuitton. I think the two little panels that run down the front is really cool and weird. I just think the rest of the dress does a little bit, maybe too much in certain elements, like the red belt. Why? I kind of wish she had worn the sweater over it though. You know what I mean? Like, I think that would have been fun. Again, I feel like we talked about this with Cam. Like, if you're gonna do it, just go for it. You can't, like, especially with Louis Vuitton, you have to just go for it. You cannot pretty, pretty princess unless the dress is gonna be pretty, pretty princess and that you've had that confirmed beforehand. Like, if it's weird and wacky and you know that, you just do. That's it. You just do. That's all. That's it. That's what you signed up for. That's why they pay you. Next up, we have Finn Wolfhart, and he is wearing Saint Laurent, as per usual. Essentially, it's a black blouse with a sort of fold over button up situation, but the fold over allows for like a drape. There's also like a little pussy bow string that flies down, very similar. Gray tailored pant and a black shoe. It's not great. I just don't think it makes a lot of sense. Listen, I haven't watched the fourth season of Stranger Things, so like maybe it has something to do with the character, even if it does. It's a little too Demogorgon in terms of like doom and gloom for me. I appreciate what we're going for with the shirt and trying to be interesting and intriguing. It has like a little band shirt sort of feeling to it, but also we have like the, the little strip that comes down and there's this, the fabric draping. I love the idea of it. The execution of it is a little harder to love. With the pan, it also just feels a little too boring. It's not my favorite Saint Laurent on Finn Wolfhart by a long, 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 long shot. Next up we have Gemma Chan and she is at the Louis Vuitton Resort 2023 show. She's wearing a look from fall 2022. Essentially it's a turtleneck with one of those overall style dresses that has the big sort of pocketed side panels that sort of gives it this really intriguing sort of trapeze shape. It's also paired with like a little brown boot. I'm, I don't like completely hate it. I think because again, Gemma here is like actually going for the weirdness of the Louis Vuitton. You know what I mean? Like it is a strange look. The the idea of like a fitted overall that falls out into like big pocketed panels that also create a sort of emphasis on the hip while pairing that over top of like a turtleneck with this very intriguing sort of plaid degradé motif and then the brown boot and the bag with the red. But it's just like it's a lot, but I also don't completely despise it. Do I maybe wish the boots were black? Yes. Besides that though, it's an intriguing look. The silhouette is interesting. It's nice that it's done in a knit. She followed through on the Nicolas Jasquier Louis Vuitton strangeness. So I'm going to take this and be, be happy with it. I will approve. Next up is Harry Styles and he is wearing JW Anderson. Now I believe this is a custom jumpsuit. It's an asymmetrical green, brown, and black stripe with a little flared bell sleeve. The thing about it is it's weird, J.W. Anderson, that's fine. I, I appreciate that. I always think it's fun and it's different and it's strange. I think the thing is the fit of it is boxy, I would say. It just doesn't feel like it actually fits to Harry's body whatsoever. Maybe that's what we were going for, but even then it just looks a little bit too sense. But to me, it looks a little too like Jelly Baby. That's what I see. I feel like I'm like Teletubby meets British childhood candy, even though I know jelly babies are not like striped at all. It's hard to process it. I understand I love weird J.W. Anderson. Let's not act like I don't. It's just, I appreciate the fact that we went for something weird and strange and it's very Harry Styles in that regard. It just doesn't do all that much. I just think the fit of it is a little too, too baggy. It just looks like it doesn't fit at like the crotch area. I feel like I can see an excess of fabric a bit, which I don't love. I also wish with a little bell sleeve, we had just like matched, matched the stripe. So it would have been a little bit nicer. And he just looks like a he is meant to be entertaining, you know, a four-year-old on Baby Shark or Coco Melon. It's just to the wiggles for me. And it's and it's hard to to love wholeheartedly. 
Next up, we have Henry Golding, and he is wearing Dior. He was at the resort menswear show or spring. I'm pretty positive that he's wearing off the runway because I browsed Dior men for quite some time, and I could not find a look except for on the most recent collections runway. It was just the pants, not the jacket. But essentially, this look is made up of a Dior oblique monogram in some sort of what? Velvet with the little Dior threads running through so you can see that it says Dior. There's a little bunny on the upper breast, which to me is a reference to like Kim Jones's whole love of brooches and putting brooches on things and putting more brooches on things. Bunny, I'm sure has to do with like ERL, which is Eli Russell Lynette's and his brand. It's there. It exists. The look isn't great. I'll say. You know what I mean? It's a little bit blah. It's just pretty much a monogram look, a little bunny patch, a white shirt, and I'm sure Dior monogram sneakers. I kind of want better for Henry. Listen, I'm, I'm fine with him being out of his like Tom Ford era. That's cool, but I think we need to like work a little bit more on what the next direction is, you know what I mean? Fashion-wise, the next era. The tailored, suave, crazy rich Asian era. That's fun. Love that. Very gorge. This one... I'm not sure of. We gotta work on that a little bit more. But I feel like he's a Dior favorite because if you're wearing stuff that's gonna appear on the runway, that usually means you're a brand favorite. So I'm hoping we can like work and finesse and finagle something a little bit better in the future. But the look is not meh. Next up we have Jay Balvin. He is wearing Balenciaga. He was at the Resort 2023 show. Listen, the t-shirt is great. Tupac, love to see it. Very early 2000s like emo grungy spencers kind of vibe the jeans are very jenko-esque but they're still emo so you know jenko jeans like the big baggy legged jeans that very popular in the 1990s they're done in black there's the sort of panels and strips that sort of come down and create a little bit of a plaid shape and then it's full of little silver hardware so grommets and fasteners and belt clips and loops and all that sort of it just has a very I don't know, emo feeling to it, which I appreciate, you know what I mean? Like it's a fun little reference, feels very Demna. Next up we have Jamie She, and she is wearing Balenciaga as well. She was at the Resort 2023 show. This I believe is a look from fall 2022. Now it's essentially a large oversized denim jacket. It has a little bit of a sloped back as we can see from the side. And then it's also paired with a pair of Janko jeans. They're in a sort of lighter black wash. She's wearing a little pump in a black leather. They're not, you know, a panty shoe, which is nice and then it's paired with a green Balenciaga bag. It's not like a hateable look because it's very much so again sort of reference to these big sort of large baggy styles which Demna's whole growing up sort of style which I think he was probably very in that like emo phase. Wearing oversized baggy clothes was very much so a part of his sort of expression at that pivotal teenage time, I would say. And so it's definitely sort of falling out into Balenciaga. And at the same time, if you think about the history of Balenciaga, big, bold silhouettes, very much so a part of the brand. So you can sort of piece together that these things do make sense in more modern cultural context. I will say, I think it's hard when you pair it with those dainty little shoes. It doesn't really work, but I appreciate that we went for it. I appreciate it. I don't love it but I appreciate it. Next up we have Kanye. He is wearing Balenciaga. Honestly, nice Kanye look. I think it's very on character, but at the same time, there are just some strange elements that make it a little bit more fashion forward. So we have this cropped leather bomber jacket. I think it's nice with the hoodie. He's wearing a hoodie. It's all good. And then there's obviously like a length to the hoodie, which is sort of reminiscing on days gone by of those long uh, Rick owens -y sort of style hoodies that were really, really popular. Kanye also wore a lot of those like long styles. He probably was like what the if not one of the people that sort of made that like long length t-shirt that was very rick owens popular amongst the hype beasts of the world and i feel like at this point we're getting to like the 10 year anniversary of that so maybe kanye is bringing it back the jeans they fit well they fit nicely and then they're tucked into these comically large boots but the boots are also like very balenciaga it's essentially a work boot that's been done in i presume some sort of leather they're just really large and they look like clown boots but I'm also kind of obsessed and if Kanye is going to do one thing, his boots that are intriguing and interesting and fashionable and all that sort of there. So this to me feels very Kanye of 10 years ago, but done in more of like a Balenciaga twist and a feel and a vibe. The boots, great, very memorable. It's Kanye, isn't it? Can't complain. At least about the fashion choices. We're at the Kourtney Kardashian wedding sponsored by Dolce & Gabbana. Prepare yourself. First up, we have Khloe Kardashian. She is wearing an off-the-shoulder black lace dress. It's made up of quite a lot of frills in terms of the skirt. It's fitted very closely to the body, very 
Dolce and Gabbana, I would say, in terms of like house codes, you know, what the brand is known for. There's a very sort of fitted lace bodice. She's also wearing a large gold crown headpiece. And like, to be completely honest, and I really would rather not say this about anything Dolce related, it's like a nice look. Chloe looks good. I really truly cannot complain about it. It's not bad. Like, you know, the rosary bead waist belt with the crucifix or the cross coming down it, I would say maybe a little bit sacrilegious. I don't know, I'm not a practicing Catholic anymore, but could be a lot worse. Chloe's done far more egregious fashion things in the past. I will take this, <laughs> shockingly. Next up we have Kim Kardashian. Now she is wearing, honestly, it's a good look. I can't complain. Like I, I truly, I cannot complain. Kim looks like she's going to a funeral, but I mean, if you're getting married with like a sponsorship by Dolce & Gabbana, pretty much as a funeral. You know what it reminds me of, even though it doesn't actually remind me of it whatsoever? I think just with the blonde hair and all that, it reminds me of the Italian movie Malena, which stars Monica Bellucci and is just a very good, like, Italian movie. It's not like La Dolce Vita, even though I've never seen La Dolce Vita because the girls won't license it to be seen anywhere. But regardless, I think it's actually a great look. The choker with the big sort of over the top, bodacious gold portrait style in the green shape with what looks like a bunch of different beads that are sort of recreated. We have the big sort of cross. It's very Byzantine inspired and, and looking. This also is like a full, from what I believe, vintage look. And it's also not even all Dolce. I think the dress maybe is Dolce, but the lace bodysuit is not. We have this beautiful lace sleeved what I can only presume is like a bodysuit and or a shirt and then we're pairing it over a very fitted black lace dress which I believe is actually Dolce and then the whole thing is vintage. It's not from Dolce & Gabbana, it's from Kim's personal archive I believe which I'm shocked but I think it's a good look. It's the best that Kim has sort of done since departing with her stylist and I am here for it. It's cute, it works, it's very enjoyable, it's not some like garbage Dolce & Gabbana off the runway shit. Evidently Kim does know what she's doing. She learned a little bit while she was with Kanye. Kimberly, I'm proud, shockingly. <laughs> Next up we have Kris Jenner and she's back to a caftan moment. It's this light, light, light pink feathered style. It's full of paillettes and reflective iridescent colors. And then also it looks like the feathers are meant to sort of create some sort of shape so we can see it sort of coming along the neckline. We can also see it coming down and sort of accentuating the bust area, accentuating the sort of waist. And then it sort of forms a V as it comes down off the sleeves with the caftan. Still not a great look. Chris loves, loves a flowing sort of style and, and I get it. I just also don't think it's good. Next, let's talk about Kendall Jenner's look again, wearing Dolce & Gabbana. It's pretty much a semi-fitted jacket with a matching high-waisted skirt. It's in beige and then there's a floral motif. It has a very like still life portrait feeling to it of like a beautiful bouquet of flowers and foliage and leaves and vines and stems, blossoms and all that, but it's just, had all the color sucked out of it. So it's this sort of brown experience with little white highlights. It's not horrible. Kendall Jenner could have worn much worse, I would say. It's not great, but it's not horrible. Jacket fit is like decent. The sleeves are a little bit big and the way that the jacket fits around the bust area seems a little bit tight and then it flares out. It seems like a little bit too tight because you can see that the fabric is like pulling kind of hard, but then the sleeves are like baggy. The skirt fits well though. So, you know, we could have let that jacket out just a little bit. But yeah, I mean, like, not memorable, not super intriguing or exciting. We're guests at a wedding, so that's fine, I guess. Although Kim and Chloe are, like, somewhat decently memorable, so maybe it's not. Maybe it's not all it's cracked up to be. Then we have Kylie. She is wearing essentially a bodycon slip sort of style dress. It's beige, and then it has some... The motif is made up of red roses and foliage flowers and all that sort of stuff. Again, like it's just not really super interesting. And then because it's so fitted, we can see so much puckering. The puckering isn't amazing. It feels like it's too tightly fitted, but I mean, I guess as the movement goes, it's like whatever. A little wicker basket bag and then a clear sort of sandal shoe. Again, I think there's a way to feel intriguing at a wedding without it being poorly done. And it feels like the Jenner aspect of the car Jenner grouping didn't get that memo, unfortunately. And finally, onto the grand poobah herself, Kourtney Kardashian. As I said, I'm very rarely one to comment on somebody's wedding dress, but I mean, 
essentially, let's look at it from the dress aspect, not that there's so much dress going on. It's essentially a lace lingerie slip with a large basque style corset that doesn't actually have breast cups placed over top. We can see the boning, it's very visible. Little bits of floral lace sort of fall out at the scalloped hem of the dress. There's a sheer white glove situation going on and some lace coming out at the bust area to each their own we want to do what we want to do i get it i understand it congrats to you i wouldn't have chosen that but it's also just weird because Dolce & Gabbana called the Kardashians like trash or whatever on Instagram however many years ago so it's like hard to feel as if this isn't a trap because it's not it's not a super memorable look and i think obviously they're two completely different vibes courtney is going for this but you look at somebody like lady kitty spencer who had her dress made by dolce and gabbana and you say to yourself self say you wow they really can do great work just depends on who what when where why and maybe sometimes how it's not great at all now we've looked at the dress obviously, but when Courtney actually got married in Portofino in Italy at the Dolce & Gabbana compound, she did have a large veil that was placed over top of the look, which is more attractive. It's sort of piped in a scallop sort of lace. It's sheer. And then it does have sort of large elements of floral motifs running throughout it. And depiction of what I would presume is the Virgin Mary. Madonna. So I think from my understanding, it's a reference to Travis's own tattoos. He does have like a, a tattoo somewhere on his body of the Virgin Mary. And so I think that's probably what we were, were going for, I would presume in the referencing. I think that's beautiful, honestly, genuinely. I think it's a nice sort of tie into the person that you're gonna marry to, the person that you love, you care about. I think it's very sweet. I think it's very lovely. If I only saw that photo, I'd be like, absolutely. To each their own, get married, live your best life. Happy for you. Would I say that you should do it at the Dolce & Gabbana compound? and then have the whole thing sponsored by Dolce Gabbana when you're multimillionaires who could afford your own wedding. No, I have a video about it that I've written. If you'd like for me to like talk about the way that Dolce Gabbana is maneuvering their PR in a very intriguing and new way, at least from my perspective, and we can discuss it. It's a pretty veil. The dress, not for me, but who am I to say yes to the dress? Dolce & Gabbana edition. Next up we have Kristen Stewart and she is wearing Chanel. Now this is from the what, spring 2022? collection, which was a collection that Virginie Viard did that was based on previous Karl Lagerfeld collection from the 1990s. One of the sort of famous Chanel goes to the beach French Riviera but make it 1990s-ified. I think it's a cute look. I think it's fun. Essentially it is a one-piece sort of swimsuit in white with little black piping and a little Chanel CC in the center. I think it's nice, doesn't offend me, which I will take. And what Virginie has done is taken a little cover-up skirt. She's placed a little silk band at the waist. And then there's a little white camellia in the center of the bow on the waist and the silk. And then from that, it's like a black mesh that falls down to the floor. It seems like Kristen Stewart has added like a boot, which I think is intriguing because you're going to the beach or you're at least you're I guess technically you would think you're going to the beach, but I think it's very Kristen Stewart styling, to be completely honest, to take something very sort of light and feminine and chanel -y and make it a little bit harder, a little bit edgier. I think it's a nice look, I think it's fun. I actually think it was a really, really good collection by Virginia, and I feel like we didn't get to see too, too much of it, so nice. Next up, we have Lana Del Rey wearing Gucci. Now this was taken at Gucci's Resort 2023 collection. Honestly though, unfortunately, it's not a great look I would personally say we have a blazer with black silk lapels and then a sort of light motif and I presume crystallized jacket. It's uh, uh, it's existing. It's a print preference, I would say. What kind of print preference it is, not sure. It seems like we've paired a sort of little shirt underneath and like a turquoise that must have some sort of feathered sleeves, which love the feathered sleeve, and then a little mini skirt or at least a skirt to the dress that is sheer and sort of has the Gucci monogram sort of running throughout it. And then a mixture of what I would say is like an 80s platform boot meets cowboy aesthetic. Again, this is my version of summertime sadness. It's very unfortunate, very Dillard's. I should probably say it sucks that this is what she's wearing and that it couldn't be better. That's what I meant. It also does suck in general as like an outfit, but like I, I'm like, oh, the fact that she is wearing this sucks because I would want something better. So 
just want to clarify. Next up, we have Lewis Hamilton, and he is wearing Valentino. Now, this is from the Fall 2022 Valentino collection. It is the PP Pink Bright Neon Pink look. Now, it's a baggy shirt, a sweater, and a wide-legged pant, and a pink sneaker, very Valentino. That's fine. I think it's a big sort of baggy style. I think also in like F1, not that I really watched that show on Netflix. I watched one episode that was really good for me. I wouldn't say that this is your normal sort of looks that, you know, you see on the Grand Prix sort of post pre. I'm not sure really truly what they wear, but I would say it's probably not violent pink and oversized and large. So I appreciate Lewis Hamilton doing something a little bit more exciting or at least intriguing or at least something to look at. Next up, let's talk about Lucien Leviscon, and he is wearing Dior. Now, this is from the, what, fall 2022 menswear Dior collection. I love this look. I think it's the most intriguing one that we saw at the resort 2023 Dior men show, because it actually felt like there was a styling element in it. So whoever Lucien's stylist is, Shout out to you because you like actually did the job. You didn't just take the look from the runway and then just put it on. No, no, no. There was like an element of cool. Things were taken, things were added. So as we can see, a sort of staple now of the Kim Jones Dior men vibe and aesthetic are these draped and sort of gathered blazers. So it nips in at the waist. I think essentially it's Kim Jones's way of sort of taking on Christian Dior's very new look silhouette, a very wasp waist, a sort of really tight and rigid sort of emphasis on the waist, but doing it without it being, you know, a corseted sort of waist sculpting situation, but rather utilizing the fabric and the way that it could be draped to create that emphasis. And I think it's very smart. We've been seeing it for years now, and it has a little pull away. It's sort of like a little train that comes out of the blazer again, sort of redefining what tailoring is. That's what Kim Jones does very, very well. Underneath that shirt, instead of what is, you know, just the usual simple button down, we actually can see a little sheet top which is obviously such a light sheer that it matches and sort of sits beautifully on Lucien's body but it's embroidered with really delicate little floral details. I wrote about this show on Instagram. Essentially these are actual references back to Christian Dior embroidery from when Monsieur Dior was alive from 1947 to 1957 and it's really beautiful. I thought it was like honestly such a lovely sort of way of redefining and sort of reigniting not only Christian Dior heritage but also reimagining it for a modern menswear sort of detail and now throughout the collection it was placed over top of button-down shirts so it gave like a little layered cool element while still keeping that traditional menswear tailoring vibe but here in Instead, it's just worn over a bare chest, which honestly we love. I think it's intriguing to see a sort of man's bare chest with hair and all that sort of stuff. And then you have this little floral, very light, very feminine embroidery over top. I think it's a really cool juxtaposition. And all the while it's underneath a blazer. So again, it, it is really cool. I appreciate that Lucien did it. Again, it's just taking the little subtle details and mixing and matching them. As for the pants, they correlate to the actual look from the blazer and it's a front you know, pleated gray wool pant. I presume that it's a reference to Christian Dior's very signature iconic gray. It was a color that he used often time and time again. He believed that it was great for any sort of fabric, any sort of silhouette, any sort of type that he was utilizing. It was something that he just really, really loved, the Dior gray, very iconic. So I think that's what we're getting a reference to here. I also think the fact that you have the pants scrunched up and the socks, it adds this cool layer of texturing that correlates to the actual jacket, which again is really, really smart. Honestly though, I will say that I think this is one of my favorite menswear looks that I've seen in a very long time. I think it's fantastic. I think it's really, really cool. Shout out Lucien, loves Khan. Shout out Dior. A moment, 100%, without a doubt. Next up, we have Maude Apatow, and she is wearing Louis Vuitton. Now, this is a look from fall 2022. It is a turtleneck gray sweater over a mini skirt with a large sort of wrap peplum that falls down and creates a train with looped tassels and then a knee-high leather tan boot. I wish the boot was gray. I know that like there was a lot of these boots going around, which is fine, but like I just wish the boot was gray. Now, listen, when you look at it on the runway, the look that it was from, it has like a big jacket, but they were in California, so like I get it. We're not gonna wear that. Maybe it's a little bit dramatic. I think that honestly, this is a pretty decent job of paring down the look while still keeping the weird elements of it. I also think that with the mini skirt and the big sort of tassels, while yes, there was like a mule on the runway or a sandal. Honestly, I don't love the way that the turtleneck tucks into the skirt. 
aspect of it. I think it looks a little bit crunchy, but besides that, I think it's an intriguing look. I appreciate the oddness of the mini skirt, very 1960s, but given the Nicolas Jeske a weird spin, it's fine, it looks cute. It's intriguing, I like this from Maud Apatow. I feel like a lot of the stuff that she does when she's in Saint Laurent, simple and easy and sort of sexy and skin tight. And this feels a little bit different, a little bit more out there, a little bit more fashion, I would say. And I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'd like to see where this goes, because I like a Maud Apatow. Now the last Megan Thee Stallion look we'll discuss is from Bottega's Fall 2021 collection. It is a strapless fitted cocktail dress. I presume, I think it is a knit to make sense for Bottega. And what it has is these little sort of loop tassels that accentuate the hip area. I think this is great. I think this makes sense for Megan. I think it works for Megan. I think it is body conscious. It fits. It exposes elements of the body. You know, the whole sort of shoulder, chest area is exposed. It fits her body really, really well. The great thing about a knit is it's gonna suction in, or it's gonna sort of puff out depending on what the body is. And I think that it fits her really, really beautifully. But the great thing about this dress is these little loop tassels, they create an accentuation of the hip. I personally think that it's a reference to sort of panniers and sort of things like that of that nature. And for Megan, Accentuating the body, not just in a body con sense, I think is smart. It's part of her brand. It's what she does. Everything's sort of about body, yada, 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 body, crazy, curvy, weight sort of style makes sense for her is why not, instead of just doing things that fit and sort of suck in and sort of showcase the silhouette, why not have you expand upon your own silhouette and exaggerate or desaggerate as you will or as you want. I think that is a smart way for Megan to sort of be more high fashion than rather just sort of sexy, clingy, and all that there. You know what I mean? Like if she's gonna do avant-garde, which I think she should do, because I think it's cute and it's fun and we'd love to see it, I think sort of accentuating the body in a way that is exaggerated and crazy, but still very body forming and body conscious and exploring, I think that's the smart way for Megan to do it. And I think this is a good example of that. So I love this happy for Megan. Let's keep this going. Next up we have Miley Cyrus and she is wearing a vintage Alexander McQueen dress. We love to see it. Essentially it is a very sort of light peachy pink. It has a strap situation. It looks like a slip dress but what has been done here is there's elements of lingerie sort of placed throughout. There's a little bow right at the center of the bra meeting point and then we have little ruched light pink you know, chiffon that sort of comes up and sort of creates texture on the bust. But the thing that I think is super fun about this McQueen dress is the way that underneath the bust, that arching that slopes underneath, it sort of creates texture, which normally I'd sit there and be like, why? It doesn't fit. Why would you do that? But because it's a McQueen and it's a vintage McQueen, my personal opinion is it's a reference to cowl necks. Now, if you look at a lot of McQueen collections from the early years, you will see cowl necks. They are done sort of in the front. You will see cowl necks in the back where essentially it's backless and the drape sort of comes out. There, there's a lot of cowl necks bunching up of fabrics done really, really beautifully. It was something that he did when he was not doing this really rigid tailoring, although he did it there too. But when he was doing things that were light and sort of diaphanous, the cowl neck definitely Definitely seat. So while this isn't a cowl neck, I would say, I do think it's an intriguing element of McQueen's lasting house codes and designs that you can sort of see in this dress. I think it's lovely. I think pulling out vintage McQueen is the way to go. If you're gonna pull out vintage designers, why not Alexander McQueen, who's a f***ing legend, who's a f***ing star, he's an icon. I'm not opposed to the bias cut he was great at. We love to see it. Next up, we have Millie Bobby Brown. She is wearing a custom Louis Vuitton dress. So essentially, it is a silk, I presume a satin, strapless dress in and of itself, like the silk satin element of the dress is satin in this sort of light, pearlescent white or very, very light gray as a high sort of slit. And then there's a belt sort of put over top and a little black sort of chiffon gathered piece that wraps around the shoulder. I don't think it's great. The issue is obviously like the satin in and of itself is just a hard fabric, especially in a color like that, that's so light, it's gonna reflect where every crease and wrinkle and crinkle is. And if you're not looking at it in person, it, it doesn't look great. I also just think that it's very simplistic and it feels like Millie should, in my opinion, at the very least sort of reference, maybe a little bit more 80s, a little bit more Stranger Things, a little bit more eleven -y kind of vibes in and of itself. It's not a great dress. And then the black gathered tool that sort of wraps around the shoulder is also just not great. I don't know what it has to do with anything. I can't really see where it fits in. Overall, I wish that we had maybe just done a, a little bit more kooky crazy over the top 
Nicolas Jasquier looked and ran with it. This doesn't really feel like that. This feels very slimmed down and simple. And sometimes those work for Louis Vuitton custom, but other times they're real. Uh, I think this is one of the real uh, moments, unfortunately. Next up, we have Nicola Coughlin, and she is wearing Valentina. Now, I believe that this is a custom look, but I believe that it's based on Valentino's Spring 2022 Haute Couture collection. It's this beautiful, crisp, pink, stunning silk dress. It's full of these bows that sort of wrap asymmetrically around the neckline and also the sleeves. It's just a great dress. It's bright. It's very Valentino. The bows are signature house code of the brand. You know, it's simplistic in all other ways. It fits her really, really well. It's, it's a nice dress. Like, there's not much else to really say about it. Next up, we have Phoebe Dondiver and she is wearing Louis Vuitton now. She is also wearing a look from the fall 2022 collection. This time, instead of it having a sweater and a intriguing knit motif and a pair of camo fringe pants, it's just the striped sort of rugby style shirt dress. To be completely honest, I think it maybe is a little bit better that way. Sometimes the crazy kooky works, other times stripped down, probably the better choice. I think it's just the pants plus you know, the sweater or pressure dress might not be great. And also I think the fact that we've done it with a nice little square toe brown boot, fine. It's okay with the navy blue and the maroon and the gray from the rugby shirt. The leather I think looks nice. And then the white sort of soles, playing with the white sort of trim on, you know, the collar and the buttons and the pocket and all that, it's fine. It's totally fine. We're gonna take it. We're gonna move on. So we have Simone Ashley and she is wearing Connor Ives. Now this is a look from fall 2022. It's essentially what I believe is like a multi-scarf halter sort of top that falls away and sort of creates little hoops. And then it's paired with a sort of very tight fitted pant that has a split hem. I don't think it's horrible. I believe that she's in, in Monaco at like the Grand Prix. Whether she's pre-pre or post-pre, I'm not sure. But I think the halter style works. I think it's cute. British star supporting a designer based in the UK. Sustainability and the fact that it's probably different little scarves that have been reconfigured to create the top. You know, with the sandal, it creates a sort of casual, cool vibe. I like when we wear cool young designers. I don't think it's the craziest look in the entire world, no, but at least it's intriguing. The, the top in and of itself is very, very intriguing. So we're happy about that. And finally, we have Zendaya for the Time 100 issue on the cover. She is wearing Valentino Haute Couture. It is a red bra and wide leg pant look with an off the shoulder sort of cape shrug jacket situation. It has those big, large, beautiful red bows that Zendaya has wrapped around herself. So it looks like it's a top, but it's really not a top. It's really just this sort of off the shoulder cape shawl situation. As per usual, she looks lovely. It's not the craziest look, but it's nice. It's fine. So that is the end of today's video. Let's talk about our best and worst because this obviously was a long one. As for the best, I'm gonna say Chloe Sevigny and Jean-Paul Gaultier, pretty fire. Oh, and I'm gonna say Lucien Leviscount and Dior. That was really like a moment. I'm obsessed with that. Fantastic. So chic, so wonderful. Honorable mention, Addison Ray and Rick Owens. Honorable mention. Happy to see it. As for worse, it's Louis Kardashians, for obvious reasons. I'm not putting somebody else in there because it's the wedding. I'm gonna have to put Harry Styles in there. I might have to put like Emma Stone in there too. Lana Del Rey, Millie Bobby Brown. There's a few. So that is the end of this May 2022 roast. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know what you guys thought of all of the looks in the comments down below. I will see you guys in the next video and TTYL.